Hey there, quantum enthusiasts. Have you ever wondered why we don't have those mind-bogglingly powerful quantum computers we've been hearing about for years? Well, you're not alone. Today, we're diving into the world of quantum computing to unravel the mystery of why we haven't yet seen these exotic machines in practical use. So, let's rewind a bit. About four years ago, Google made headlines when they showed off the incredible capabilities of quantum computers. They claimed to have achieved something called, quantum supremacy, where their quantum computer solved a problem that was simply impossible for the best classical computers at the time. It was a groundbreaking moment, and as new scientists put it, Google had secured a spot in the history books. Fast forward to today, and we're left wondering. Why haven't quantum computers taken over the world yet? Well, it turns out that the journey to quantum supremacy isn't as straightforward as it might seem. After Google's initial breakthrough, other groups also claim to have achieved quantum supremacy, but there's been a bit of a tug of war between quantum and classical computers. Improved algorithms for classical computers have sometimes overshadowed the quantum machines or posed a serious threat to their supremacy. It's like a never-ending battle. You see, quantum supremacy hinges on two key factors, the number of qubits, those tiny quantum bits, and the complexity of the tasks they can handle, often referred to as circuit depth. Only when a quantum computer excels in both of these aspects will it truly outshine classical computers. But when will that happen? Well, that's the million-dollar question. According to Bill Pfefferman from the University of Chicago, it's uncertain at which point quantum computers will definitively pull ahead. Google's original quantum supremacy demonstration involved something called, random circuit sampling, using 54 superconducting qubits. But this year, they upped the ante, using 70 qubits for 24 cycles. While this might not sound like a massive leap, it represents a significant increase in complexity. Google claims that replicating a calculation on their 70 qubit machine would take the best supercomputers a staggering 47 years. However, there's a catch, those 70 qubits are not without their flaws. They're plagued by something called, noise, which can make it tricky to confirm if the computer is fully taking advantage of its quantum nature. Google's researchers are hard at work trying to prove and measure the quantumness of their machine and how noise affects it. To do this, they've created a benchmark that uses a classical computer to predict quantum machine outputs and calculate the differences. The bigger the difference, the more complex the quantum system. But there's still some uncertainty about how accurate this benchmark truly is. Now, Google isn't the only player in this quantum game. Researchers at the University of Science and Technology of China have also demonstrated quantum supremacy with 56 qubits, and they're exploring alternative quantum computing designs using photons as qubits. Their machine, Juzong, performs something called, boson sampling, which measures photons bouncing around a maze of mirrors and beam splitters. However, verifying that these measurements are genuinely quantum is a tricky task, and the theory to certify these machines is still a bit of a puzzle. Because of these challenges, the results from these quantum machines are still somewhat vulnerable to classical breakthroughs. For example, USTC initially claimed that verifying their Juzong result would take 600 million years, but researchers found a way to do it in months due to a loophole in how photons were measured. While USTC fixed this issue, the lack of a coherent means to verify quantum advantage remains a concern. Now, you might be wondering, Okay, but what can quantum computers actually do? Well, researchers are hard at work trying to find practical applications. For example, they're exploring how quantum computers could tackle mathematical problems useful in drug design and machine learning. But here's the tricky part. Verifying whether quantum computers genuinely outperform classical ones in these applications is still a challenge. Mapping real-world problems to quantum computers and vice versa is a big part of ongoing research and development. Scientists from various fields are collaborating to figure out which problems quantum computers might solve more efficiently. So, when will we finally see quantum computers make a significant impact? According to Jay Gambetta at IBM, it might not be about benchmarks and mathematical proofs. Instead, the moment to watch for is when scientists from other fields start choosing quantum computers for their work. That's when we'll know quantum computers are truly making a difference. And there you have it, the fascinating journey of quantum computers and why they haven't completely taken over the world just yet. Stay tuned for more updates on the quantum revolution, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more mind-blowing tech content.